my dear Chitku people, I welcome you all to mock test 6 of our NEED Premier League series and today the chapter we are going to deal with is molecular basis of inheritance. So no other questions from any other chapters. Now if you are a person who have already tried to attempt the questions, okay if you have completed the uh, questions and I am all good you can watch the video to check your answers. But before going through this video I want you to at least try the questions once and then come because at that point of time you will understand where are you lacking. Yeah. Now going ahead, what do we have over here? The first question. During DNA replication, Okazaki fragments are used to elongate what? What do you mean by DNA replication? That is the first question. DNA replication means you are wanting to make more copies of the DNA. Okay. And when you want to make more copies of the DNA, first thing that you have to do, this is in a coil state. You have to uncoil it. So now you have uncoiled it and one strand would appear like this, other strand will appear like this. Both of them are complementary to each other. So for suppose this is in 3 dash to 5 dash direction, this will be in opposite direction. It will be anti-parallel. Okay. So here if it's 3 dash, here it will be 5 dash. Now again, I have opened just that part. The other parts are still being coiled. So this particular portion that you see, it looks like a fork. So you call this as replication fork. What do you call this as? You call this as replication fork my dear children. Now DNA replication takes place with the help of an enzyme which is known as DNA polymerase. Fine and DNA polymerase says that I will be replicating the DNA only in one direction that is 5 is to 3. That is 5 is to 3. So can I make 5 is to 3 over here? No children because here also 5 is there. I cannot add one more strand which is in 5, 5 is to 3 direction. I have to make a strand over here. So this DNA strand will be made. This is a new DNA strand that will be made over here in 5 dash to 3 dash direction which is said by the DNA polymerase. But what about this? This strand also have to be replicated. That's when you get complementary strands, right? This and this will be complementary to each other. And this, the new strand that will be formed should be complementary to this. But the problem is DNA polymerase works only in which direction children? It works only in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So 3 dash is over here. So it from, it goes from here to here. It will go from here to here. Fine. Okay. Similarly, here to here. Similarly, here to here such that you have things and this won't be continuous. This would not be continuous because obviously DNA polymerase is going this side. DNA polymerase is going this side. So whenever it can, it is making strands over here. You call these strands as what children? You call them as, what do you call them? Uh, Okazaki fragments. You call them as Okazaki fragments. Fine. So this strand which is lagging in the process of replication, you call this strand as lagging strand. Just a second. You call this strand as lagging strand. And this strand which is doing the replication properly, you call this as leading strand. Okay. So during DNA replication, Okazaki fragments are used to elongate, okay? The lagging strand towards the replication fork. Now, do you think the Okazaki fragments will be used to elongate the lagging strand towards the replication fork? No, okay? It replication fork is here and you don't need to make it towards this side. Now, the leading strand away from the replication fork, the lagging strand away from the replication fork, Okay, or the leading strand towards the replication fork. It's basically the lagging strand away from the replication fork. Over here, these fragments are used to elongate this in this particular direction. Okay, so your correct answer becomes this. Was next question. Name the enzyme that facilitates opening of DNA helix during transcription. Now, transcription is a process where the DNA is used to make mRNA. Is used to make mRNA. This process is known as transcription my dear children okay now for that again if dna is in the coil state it has to be opened up it has to be opened up such that the dna strand which looks like this will have a complementary mrl strand being formed for that you have to open this up now usually in the case of dna replication 
there was DNA helicase which was doing this work. But in the case of RNA synthesis, that is basically mRNA formation or transcription, at this point of time, there is RNA polymerase, there is RNA polymerase which does this job. RNA polymerase says, I will be what say opening up the helix and I will be doing all the work, I will be making mRNA also. But in the case of DNA replication, that was not the case. DNA polymerase was making things, okay, DNA polymerase was basically making things and uh, DNA helicase that you see over here was going to open things up. There are different, different enzymes for different, different work. But over here, we have one and all RNA polymerase, which does everything, okay. So, this is the correct answer, children. Going ahead. Match the following RNA polymerase with their transcribed product. So, RNA polymerase, you have different, different types. One, two, and three. Different, different functions also they have. So, always remember this fact that two is for RNA polymerase 2 is for transcription of DNA into mRNA. This guy is the main guy that we always study. Okay, it is for transcription and the formation of mRNA. Okay, mRNA does not directly form. Before that, what do you form? HNRNA. HNRNA has some cut pits and then only when it matures, we say it forms mRNA. So, basically HNRNA, mRNA means the same thing in, in this sense. Okay. Usually what happens, HNRNA that is, it has areas which codes for genes, you call this areas as exons and it's, it has area which is not code for genes, you call them as introns. Okay, so it has exons and it has introns, fine. This is HNRNA. So whatever information was there in DNA, it is now transcribed to HNRNA. But when you want to make mRNA, you cut this areas off, which does not code for anything. And now you just have a strand of what? Exons, children. This is what you call as mRNA, the mature RNA, the messenger RNA. Okay. But RNA polymerase 2 is responsible for all this. Okay. Now RNA polymerase 1. If you talk about RNA polymerase 1, One means it has, it has should be the primary function, you can remember like that. So, the primary function of RNA polymerase, where this is the RNA and everything go to the ribosome. So, you ha there has to be someone who make the ribosome, yes, and that's something that makes up the ribosome is what? RRNA children. It is what? RRNA. So, basically, the primary function is to make your ribosome and your ribosome is made with the help of RRNA and everything, ribosomal RNA. You can think like that. So, RNA polymerase 1 will be coding for RRNA. Okay. Now, if we talk about RNA polymerase 3, RNA polymerase 3. In this particular case, okay, in the case of RNA polymerase 3, 3 sounds like T, 3 sounds like T. So, this is the one that codes for tRNA. Okay, this is the one that codes for tRNA. You can remember like that. So, RNA polymerase 2, always remember the middle one that comes is for your mRNA or hnRNA. Okay, and RNA polymerase 1 does the primary function to form the ribosomes. For the ribosomes, you need ribosomal RNA. So, that is rRNA that is formed by uh, RNA polymerase 1. Ri uh, RNA polymerase 3 is for tRNA. So, over here, if you match, then 1 is for what children? 1 is for rRNA, 2 is for hnRNA, 3 is for tRNA. So, 1 goes with 2, okay, 1 goes with 2, 2 goes with 3 and uh, 3 goes with 1. So, this is the correct answer, fine. So, over here in the Okazaki fragments, now primers are added initially and then only this length is being increased. It's not like directly the DNA come is, is coming over here and working like that. So, there are primers being added and then only things are being elongated. That is what you call as Okazaki fragments, fine. Uh, all of a sudden it came to my head, that's why. Yeah. Now, A, G, this is a sequence, okay. It is a sequence from the coding strand of a gene. What do you mean by coding strand, children? So, when you talk about DNA replication, you have leading and lagging strand, okay. Now, when you talk about transcription, you have two strand. One strand of DNA, okay, which will be useful for making the mRNA, which will be used as template for making the mRNA, you call this strand as template strand. you call this strand as template strand. Now, on the other hand, this strand, okay, which is not used for the formation of mRNA is just there. You call this strand as, just a second, 
you call this strand as coding strand okay now if you still didn't understand i'll tell you so just imagine that this is in 3 dash to 5 dash direction and this will be on the opposite direction 5 dash to 3 dash this is our dna this is our dna children okay now over here this DNA strand, for example, it is having A, T, G, C, whatever is there. And over here, the sequence will be A opposite, you will be have T, T opposite, you have A opposite, C opposite, G. This is the strand. Obviously, it will be complementary strand. Now, if you want to make an mRNA, mRNA also is made in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. mRNA is also made in 5 dash to 3 dash direction with the help of the enzyme that is RNA polymerase. So, RNA polymerase, DNA polymerase all works in this direction. Okay. So, from here, the making of mRNA has started. So, instead of A, what will be there? Instead of A, it should be pairing with T, but it is an RNA. And RNA does not have T, instead it has what? What children? U, uracil. So, instead of T, it will be U. Okay. Now, here T is there. T pairs with A. So, I will write A. G pairs with C. So, C. C pairs with G. So, G. Over here, if you see, this is the mRNA strand that we will be getting. Okay. Don't you think this mRNA strand has high resemblance to this coding strand? This mRNA strand which is being formed has high resemblance to the coding strand because obviously this is also complementary to this, this is complementary to this, this is complementary to this as well. Just the only difference is that this is an mRNA, this is a DNA strand. And mRNA, if it's an RNA, it will be having uracil instead of what? Thiamine. Instead of thiamine, it will be having uracil. So wherever you see T, you have to make it U. Now over here, you are given a sequence of the coding strand. That is this particular strand. Now, what will be the corresponding sequence of the transcribed mRNA? You are not given the code of the template strand. Instead, you are given this code. And you are asked, what will be the sequence of the transcribed mRNA? Don't you think it will be the same? Just that wherever you find T, you have to replace it with U. Exactly. So, over here, if A, G, G, T, A is there. So, you have to find uh, what children? You have to find A, C, C, U. Sorry, A, G, G, U. Okay, this, there won't be any change. Just the change will be over here. So, it will be A, G, G, U and then A, U and then C, G, C, A, again U. So, this should be the case. So, let's find A, G, G, U, A, U, C, G, C, A, U again. So, this is the correct thing. Okay, so it will be the entirely same just that you have to replace T with U because this is an mRNA. Works? This came in need 2018. Going ahead, which of the following RNAs should be most abundant in animal cell? What do you think? Which type of RNA? tRNA is known as transfer RNA, which transfers the amino acid. Okay, the ones that has given in your book, I'll explain that. mRNA is messenger RNA. Okay, it transfers the information as to what proteins have to be made to the tRNA and in responding in respondents to this only tRNA helps in bringing the amino acids and things like that. Micro RNA is there, we don't need to study as of now. rRNA is used for formation of ribosomes. Now, if ribosomes is not there, don't you think that protein synthesis will get stopped because ribosome is the one, ribosome is the organelle in between which the mRNA which is there comes and on this ribosome only, okay, in between this mRNA has come which has to be translated to make protein and on this a thing only the tRNA comes and binds and passes off its amino acid so everything is happening with the help of ribosomes so ribosomes have to be made first so basically the most amount of things RNA that should be abandoned in animal cell is rRNA children it should be rRNA okay so you have percentage over here I have given you so rRNA is the most abundant of all types of RNA 70 to 88 percent okay hence it will be present in the highest amount percentage of tRNA and mRNA is 15 percent and 2 to 5 percent so for tRNA it is again 15 percent for mRNA it is 2 to 5 percent okay the micro RNA are 21 to 22 base pairs long that bring degeneration of the mRNA that is not of use as of now so at least you can remember this data that our RNA is something that is we need in the most amount okay or it is there. Fine, works and then comes tRNA and then comes mRNA. Now, the equivalent of a structural gene is a mutant, cistron, operon, lecon, recon. So, basically what do you mean by cistron? Direct answer, the answer is cistron. Okay, cistron means the area which is coding for the gene, which is coding for the protein. Okay, and structural gene also means the same thing. This is the area which will be coding for a protein. So, I can say that this is cistron this is structural gene everything means the same in one or the other sense so it will be this even though it has a slight difference but yes for your concern it is this okay we say that uh, 
eukaryotes are monocystronic as they just have one cystron in the whole gene okay and we say you prokaryotes are polycystronic as in they have multiple uh, cystrons all together so they have multiple genes over here this gene might be coding for this this gene might be coding for this this gene might be coding for that but all of them are actually together you call actually you call the whole thing as what a structural gene if you take out each of the genes you call this is a cystron this is a cystron this is a cystron but since we can say this whole thing is what children I am telling you again this whole thing is a structural gene but if I talk in literal sense what is cystron cystron is one gene that will be coding for one protein so this is one cystron this is second cystron this is third cystron but all the cystrons basically they are genes only so I call them that this is equivalent to what structural gene fine works now going ahead Question number seven, which of the following rRNAs acts as a structural RNA as well as a ribozyme in bacteria? So what do you mean by structural RNA? So basically rib uh, uh, ribosomes, no? Ribosomes, they are made up of two things. One thing is rRNA, that is ribosomal RNA. And apart from that, they are made up of ribosomal proteins. They are also made up of ribosomal proteins, my dear children. Okay? Now over here, I say that which of the following rRNAs are acting as structural RNA? Structural RNA, because this is acting as a structural RNA, okay? Apart from that, they're also acting as ribozyme. Ribozyme means it's an enzyme. It's an enzyme. And you have different, different types of rRNAs. You have different, different types of rRNAs. So for your knowledge, the one that acts as enzyme also, it is 23S rRNA. It is what children, 23S rRNA. In the case of, this is a bacteria, bacteria is prokaryote. In our case, it is 28S rRNA that is acting as an enzyme also, that is ribozyme. What is the use of ribozyme? Basically, it helps in the formation of bonds between the amino acids and everything over here. Okay? Works? So, rRNA acting as structural gene as well as the enzyme is 23S rRNA in the case of bacteria. And in our case, it is 28S rRNA. S rRNA, fine? Going ahead, DNA dependent RNA polymerase catalyzes transcription on one strand of the DNA which is called, I told you that if these are the two strands, on one strand the transcription is taking place. Okay, what is that one strand on which transcription is taking place? I say this is the one, this is the one because RNA polymerase works in this direction. Okay, and this is the one, I call this strand as template strand. And the one that does not, is, is not involved in this is known as coding strand. Do not get confused with coding. Coding usually means you think that it might code for something, but it's not. Okay, it is not. So this is the answer to my dear children. So I'm writing template strand. Fine. Going ahead. Select the correct option. Direction of RNA synthesis. You tell me. Direction of RNA synthesis, I told you right now. It is 5 dash to 3 dash. Okay. Direction of, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, we have to see both of them and then only take. So, direction of RNA synthesis is 5 dash to 3 dash. Okay, in this direction only things goes. Fine. Now, direction of reading of the template DNA strand. If you talk about template DNA strand, it is 3 dash to 5 dash. In, dash. in this direction, it is being read. So, the correct answer will be A. We didn't even have to go ahead. Okay, works. Okay, removal of introns and joining of exons in a defined order during transcription is called. So again, I told you what are introns and exons, but I can explain you again. So when I say DNA is there and this DNA is going to form the mRNA. So it is not directly transcribing it to mRNA. Instead, it is forming something which is known as HNRNA, heterogeneous RNA. Okay, over here in HNRNA, no. There are areas which codes for proteins, which code for something. You call these areas as exon and the areas which does not code for anything, you call them as introns. They are also known as intervening sequences. As in they intervene in between the normal coding sequences. Okay, so you have an exon, you have an intron and then again you will be having an exon over here. Fine. Now this process. Okay, this process where you are removing the introns, okay, where you are removing the introns, you call this process as splicing. You call this process as splicing and at the end over here, what do you get children? 
you get a, a, a string of exons only. Okay, and now I call this as mRNA. So this process is known as splicing. Okay, this was repeated twice. So you have to be very, very careful with this question. Fine, going ahead. If one strand of DNA has nitrogenous base sequence as A, T, G, C, T, G, what is the complementary RNA strand sequence? So if the DNA strand sequence, easy question, no, it is, it is A, T, C, T, G. Okay, this is DNA and you are asked about RNA. What will the complementary strand sequence in RNA? So A, you know, in the case of, in the case of RNA, a binds with U rather than T and G always binds with C that is for sure this is in the case of RNA in the case of DNA things are quite different okay in the case of DNA A binds with T and G binds with C right so over here A is going to this is an RNA so A is going to bind with U T is going to bind with A C is going to bind with G uh, T is going to bind with again A and G is going to bind with C. This should be the sequence. So U, A, G, A, C. This is the correct answer, my dear children. Works? Okay. Going ahead. Ribosomal RNA is actively synthesized in rRNA. Where do you think rRNA is made? Now, this is not something that is given in your NCRT, I believe. You have already read it probably in lower grade. Okay. So, rRNA, a type of RNA which is used to make the ribosomes, where it is actually synthesized. Okay, so th these two parts are uh, of the nucleus only. Okay, these two are the parts of nucleus. So, you know in the nucleus things are happening. But where exactly? Basically, it's nucleus. It's nucleus. So, in the nucleus, you might have seen them darkly stained region. This darkly stained region, I'm talking about the nucleus. This is the nucleus itself, okay? This is the whole cell. This is the nucleus. And inside the nucleus also, you have some darkly stained region. You call this region as nucleosome, which is responsible for rRNA and everything, okay? So if you didn't know until now, it's time to know that this is the correct answer. Cool? Works? Going ahead. Removal of R R R RNA polymerase 3 from nucleosome will affect, nucleoplasm will affect the synthesis of RNA polymerase 3 sounds like t 3 t right so it will be trna and if you remember can you tell me about the other ones rna polymerase 1 what was it coding for polymerase 1 what is the primary function what do you want to make ribosome initially because if the, without ribosome can you make proteins no so our rna is made by rna polymerase 1 rna polymerase 2 is for hnrna or mrna basically cool so this one is for trna rna polymerase 3 for trna cool now in eukaryotes, cell transcription, RNA splicing and RNA capping takes place inside what? So, in eukaryotes, they need processing. In eukaryotes, we need processing. In prokaryotes, there is no introns and stuff like that. So, that you need processing and things like splicing and all you don't need. Because there are no introns. Okay. There are no introns. But in our case, we have introns and everything. So, splicing, everything has to take place. And thereafter, for example, this is a cell. This is the nucleus. This is a DNA. The DNA helps in the formation of the RNA. That is mRNA, suppose. Okay. And this mRNA before going out to meet the ribosome such that the proteins can be made. So before all this thing happens, the RNA splicing has to be done, as in introns have to be removed. RNA capping has to be done. What do you mean by capping? Capping is basically at the end of the strip, no, you add one group. 5-methyl guanosin. 5-methyl guanosin triphosphate. Okay. 5-methyl guanosin triphosphate is being added. What do you mean by that? Basically, you have this thing 1 2 3 4 and 5 and then you have three phosphate groups over here children okay this is triphosphate now 5 methyl guanosin basically nitrogen base attached to over here so guanosin is basically over here and on this on the fifth position of guanosin i'm at adding methyl so this whole thing is added at the end this is known as capping okay this is known as capping and then tailing is also done so basically at the end of the rna mrna polypeptide of AAAAA is added, polynucleotide chain, AA, adenine, adenine, adenine is added. This is known as tailing. After this only it is being sent out. That's when it knows that, okay, this particular mRNA is fine and I can probably translate it. Okay, the ribosome says I can probably translate it if all things are there. And so everything that is that I said is happening inside the nucleus children. 
it is happening inside the nucleus only then only it is allowed to go out okay so this is the 14th question i hope you got the answer now going ahead which form of rna has a structure resembling clover leaf so it was said that the structure of trna okay the structure of trna look like clover leaf okay but but later it was said that the actual structure looked like inverted l so always remember the clover leaf okay the clover you add you no know, in food and all okay so it was said that trna structure looks like clover leaf but then later it was said that it actually looks like inverted l what does it look like inverted l now is this piece of information useful ma'am yes it has come i think i could put the question as well yes okay so this is the answer for 15 question going ahead children uh okay mrna is synthesized on dna template in which direction mrna is synthesized on the dna template in which direction this 5 dash to 3 dash we already discussed because rna polymerase works in this direction is it okay if it is written 3 dash to 5 dash both a and b no children any no it is this direction okay 5 dash to 3 dash going ahead in three dimensional view the molecule of trna is here comes the question l shaped s shaped uh, y shaped e shaped it is l shaped actually what l shaped inverted l shaped okay basic basic small small things that we tend to not uh, uh, what say put our concentration on that also comes as a question so we have to be very much what say uh, attentive while reading the ncert now genes that are involved in turning on and off the transcription of a set of structural genes are known as so here comes the question of lac operons okay now we'll start doing the questions of lac operon and over here i want to tell you one thing so the lac operon no it's basically nothing it has a set of gene okay okay now listen to me this is a structural gene this that you see is a structural gene they will be coding for something they will be coding for something okay some protein some type of protein this 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 all of them okay this is the promoter so for every for every uh, gene that we have we have a promoter region in the dna strand in the dna while transcription is happening we have a area that is known as promoter onto which the rna polymerase comes and attaches okay so there's a promoter region onto which the rna polymerase comes and attaches and now over here there is another region which you call as operator operator now this operator's role is if something is there which could stop the transcription that could come and attach over here such that the rna polymerase cannot move ahead so rna polymerase you know that it comes and attaches over here right now if something very big is coming and attaching over here and say that no i won't allow transcription will this rna polymerase move forward no so this type of proteins which could affect okay things negatively you call them repressor proteins you call them repressor proteins and sometimes there could be things that could activate also okay in that case they are known as activator proteins activator proteins okay but now over here so you know it can either repress or it can either activate but these are also proteins and proteins are always coded by gene so where are these genes located just near to it just near to it you have a gene and this gene also has a promoter such that this can also get transcribed and make the proteins okay you call these genes as regulatory genes children you call these genes as regulatory genes because regulatory genes are the ones that could give the command that whether this protein has to be made or this depending on what the type of regulatory gene is over here so in the case of something that is known as lac operon so this is an operon this thing that we see is an operon that is there for lactose synthesis and things like that you will get to know okay so over here in the case of lac operon this regulatory gene which is there it is doing inhibitory function it is producing repressor protein instead of this it is producing repressor protein instead of this so i call this gene as this is a regulatory gene i call it has a specific name it is known as inhibitory gene what do i call it i call it inhibitory gene okay works okay 
So over here, genes that are involved, now if it was something else, it was not inhibitory gene, it was activating genes such that it was able to produce activated proteins that would have been different. Now anyways, both of them, they are regulatory genes, they are going to regulate the action of this particular thing. So genes that are involved in turning on or off the transcription of a set of structural genes are known as regulatory genes children. Okay, what do you call them? Regulates. Fine? Works? Okay, going ahead. 19th question, which of the following is not a property of genetic code? So, do you think the genetic co code, they are overlapping? Genetic codes, do they overlap? No children, they do not, okay? They do not overlap, so this is not the case. Degeneracy, what do you mean by degeneracy? Basically, when I say that there are multiple codons coding for the same thing. So, when there are multiple codons codon coding for the same thing, okay, that is one amino acid. So, you have codon 1, codon 2, codon 3, all of them coding for one amino acid, you call this as degeneracy. And we say um, uh, the codons basically are degenerate. The codons basically are degenerate. How you can remember it? You can think that, okay, the first codon is thinking that I am making this amino acid. But the second codon is also making this amino acid. The third codon is also making this amino acid. They are being cheated. <laughs> so, in this way, you can write degeneracy. So, this feature is there in the case of genetic code. But it's not like one codon that codes for amino acid. This, this same codon can code for another amino acid. No children, it cannot code for another amino acid. So, is it ambiguous? No, it is unambiguous. In the case, if it was coding for another amino acid, then at that point of time, you call it ambiguous. This is not ambiguous, it's unambiguous. So, this is wrong. The genetic code is unambiguous. Okay, and it is universal. Is it universal? For every organism, do you think the same, it is the same thing? Same codons are coding for the same proteins? Yes. You have an exception, mitochondrial DNA and everything is there, protozoan DNA, that is something else. Apart from that, all of them has the same type of codons which codes for the amino acid. So, this is a universal function that it is degenerate. It shows degeneracy also and it is non-overlapping as well. So, this is a function that is not a property of the genetic code. Works? Going ahead. Which one of the following pairs of codons is correctly matched with their function or the signal for the particular amino acid? So, I'm not sure if you know the codon, the whole the codon strand. I have made a video on this in which I have given a trick. I don't know if it works or not, but still you can go watch the video if you want to. Over here, I'll tell you the basic things which is needed for this particular question to solve. Okay. So, children, always remember AUG. AUG is the only is the only codon that will be coding for that will be coding for methionine. There is no other codon that codes for methionine. Okay. Now AUG is also the codon that is acting as a start codon. So if you want to start the process of translation, the first codon that you should be having is AUG. Then only you can start. So this is also known as start codon. Now you have three set of stop codon. You have three stop codons as well, that is UAA, UGA and UAG. All these three that you see over here, they are stop codons. What are the children? They are stop codons. Now we have to see the correct match. So AUG and ACG start or methionine, no children. ACG is not there. I told you only one codon will code for methionine. Only one codon is going to code for methionine. So this is wrong. Okay. Now, if you are not aware of this, that's also fine because this is exactly correct. UAG, UAG and UG are stop codons and you know it, put a tick mark on this. At least the basic idea you should be having but I am also telling you, learn the genetic code, it will be really helpful. We never know what type of questions could come later on. Okay, done. Can we go ahead? Okay. In the genetic code dictionary, how many codons are used to code for 20 essential amino acids? So how was this found? Basically, you know there are four nitrogen bases, that is A. G, C and T. Agree? There are four nitrogen bases, right? Now, if I say four and four, basically what all combinations can come together to give 20 amino acids? Then if I say four is to the power two, that means two codons are coming together. If in that pair I try to find, 16 codons will be there. 16 codons cannot make 20 amino acids for sure. So I want something that will be above 20 I want something that will be about 20 or nearest to 20, but not 16. 16 is less. Now, 4 raised to the power 3, if I do, it will come out to be 64. So, 64 codons for 20 amino acid is fine. 
64 codons for 20 amino acid is fine because one codon, second codon, third codon can code for the same amino acid, but at least we have plenty of codons to code for amino acid, right? So this becomes the closest factor, which is why we say it is coming in the pair of uh, in the in the number of three triplet codons are there. Okay, so triplet codons are there. So basically over here, how many codons are needed for coding 20 essential amino acid children? 64. And in the 64, I'll tell you, 61 is basically coding for amino acid. 61 are basically coding for amino acids and three of them are basically stop codons. They do not code for anything. They do not code for any amino acid. They are just stop codons. Works? Okay, going ahead. If the DNA codons are ATG, ATG, ATG and a cystone base is inserted at the beginning, then which of the following will result? So basically this is the sequence. What do you have sequence? ATG, that is adenine, thymine, guanine, ATG, again, and ATG. This is the sequence. So three, three, three. This three codons are there. Now I am adding cystone base over here in the front. See, at this point of time, there will be a shifting of the frame. So now, CAT will come together, GAT will come together, GAT will again come together and the G is left alone. So this is the codon now we have. So what is the correct match that you see over here? That is this. Fine? Works? Cool? Now going ahead. The first phase of translation is, what do you mean by first phase of translation? This is, this is a, again very confusing question. So what is the first step of translation could be asked? What is the first phase of translation could be asked? Whenever this question is asked at the first phase of translation, that means you're talking about amino acylation of tRNA. I told you that tRNA basically which looks like this. This is the 5 dash end of tRNA. This is also an RNA only but it is formed in this way. And this is a 3 dash end. And on the 3 dash end, okay, this particular loop that you see is known as anticodon loop. What do you call this? Anticodon loop. And over here, you will have the anticodon for the codon, which is over here in the mRNA. So, for suppose here AUG is there in the codon. This is the mRNA strand. And over here, I have what? AUG. So, over here, the tRNA that should be containing the anticodon, uh, what say? A is there, so U. UAC should come and bind over here. So this is the anticodon children. This is what the anticodon and this is the codon. So before all things this happen, all kind of these things happen, basically if, if someone has this anticodon, then it will be binding to an amino acid which will be specific. And what is this amino acid children over here? Since it is AUG and AUG codes for methionine. So this amino acid which will be there will be methionine. Okay, so it is not because of the anticodon why methionine is there, it is because of this codon. Okay, so codon, whenever we say genetic codes, we are looking for codons, not anticodons. Anticodon comes and binds, that is there. Okay, so obviously it will have the complementary function. So obviously it will be denoted with methionine only. So each such tRNA will be coding, uh, will be going and joining with an amino acid or basically amino acid comes and joins with the tRNA. Now this is the first step. When the amino acid comes and joins with the tRNA, Okay, amino acid is there in the cytoplasm. Similarly, you have TRN in the cytoplasm. Now, when the amino acid comes and joins with the, uh, this thing, you call this process as amino acylation. You call this process as amino acylation or you also call this as charging of tRNA. Or you also call this as charging of tRNA, my dear champions. Okay, so this is the first phase of translation. This should happen, then only this and everything it will come and bind and everything will happen. Now, if you're asked about the first step, what is the first step? Basically, the first step is you have two, uh, two ribosome, right? This is the smaller subunit of ribosome. This is the larger subunit of ribosome. So, first thing is that the smaller subunit comes in contact with the mRNA. The smaller subunit comes in contact with the mRNA. So this is the first step. Second step is that this tRNA comes and binds over here. This is the second step. Third step is that this thing that you see, the large subunit comes and binds over here. That is the third thing. So you have three steps that is different. The first phase of translation when you are asked, it is a minor acylation of charging of tRNA or charging of tRNA. First step if you are asked for translation or you ask that how does translation begin? So at that point of time, you have to tell the small subunit comes and attaches over here. Okay. So that is the thing. Works. Now going ahead, what do we have? Polysome. 24th question. Polysome is formed by, what do you understand by polysome? Polysome is basically 
when you have several ribosomes we can we have several ribosomes attached on the mrna you call this as you call this as polysome why do you think several uh, uh, ribosomes are coming and attaching on the mrna so basically suppose this is an mrna strand and you know that mrna strand is going to code for proteins you know that mrna strand is going to code for what children proteins right so over here so over here i am saying for example in my body i need this protein in very much amount as of now as of now i want this particular protein in very much amount and this whole process is known as translation where you are making proteins out of mrna where the trna and everything comes okay so at this point of time if i have multiple ribosomes if i have multiple ribosomes and all these ribosomes are helping the making of the proteins over here don't you think i'll get multiple copies of proteins as well yes i'll get and my need will be satisfied over here my need will be satisfied over here so this is the structure this structure where on the mrna you have multiple ribosomes you call them as polysomes what do you call it as polysome so a ribosome with several subunits no ribosome attached to each other in a linear arrangement no several ribosomes attached to a single mrna yes many ribosomes attached to a strand of endoplasmic reticulum no children this is the thing when a, when on a single mrna there are so many ribosomes that are being attached this is what you call as polysome fine going ahead gene regulation governing lactose operon of e coli that involves a lac i gene product is how so how is the, okay so this is the thing that i made over there i can make it again over here as well and explain you so this is the question that we did uh, in uh, class also in our lecture okay when we were speaking about the lac operon lac gene just a second this is operator for and you have c y and a so listen this thing that you see from here to here this is the structural gene i told you structural gene and over here it's polycystronic it's a bacteria it's e coli when you talk about this it's e coli okay an e coli has polycystronic thing so it has three cystrons over here three of them will be coding for three different proteins what are the proteins z codes for beta galactosidase galactosidase y codes for permease so if you see all of them are enzyme as 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 that means it's enzyme okay and a codes for transacetylase fine o stands for operator p stands for promoter fine over here this is this thing that you see over here is a regulatory gene is a regulatory gene fine works and this thing that you see over here is the promoter of this particular gene so this particular gene has its own promoter okay this particular gene also has its own promoter now the thing is children e coli if it is put in a medium that has lactose that has lactose it will take it take in that lactose for energy it will take in that lactose for energy but for that you need this particular enzyme that is permease now permease what does it do basically makes the membrane permeable such that the lactose which is there can get inside but there's a twist in the story initially usually what happens is that this regulatory gene that you see over here i told you it can either code for repressor protein or activator protein but this is a inhibitory gene this regulatory gene that you see over here it's it's, it's i gene right so it is an inhibitory gene it will be coding for repressor protein it will be coding for repressor protein and what does this repressor protein do it goes and binds on the operator it goes and binds on the operator now if it bites on the operator then the rna polymerase which has to do the transcription of this which is which will be coming and binding on the promoter would not be able to go ahead because of this particular repressor protein okay so i say that lac operon is basically switched off the lac operon is basically switched off none of this transcription is basically happening but it's not like totally switched off some amount of permease everything is being made but we say it's in a switched off condition because the operator is being coded by the repressor okay so operator is being covered by the repressor so i say that this is in switched off condition okay now this is a negative regulation 
isn't it negative regulation obviously you're negatively regulating something so this is an example of negative regulation as well this is an example of negative regulation now when i want to turn this on i want the lac operon to turn on what is the thing that i need to do basically i said permeas is there permeas when it makes the uh, membrane permeable what happens lactose can get inside lactose it comes and sees that oh my friends are suffering over there so what do i do if i bind with this guy the repressive protein it won't be able to go and bind over there it would not be able to go and bind over here <laughs> just a second things happen in life but we have to be happening <laughs> so over here now if lactose is going and binding on the repressor protein what will happen children this repressor protein won't be available to go and bind over there and the transcription can easily take place okay can easily take place so over here this lactose which is helping in the induction of the uh, what say transcription you call this lactose as inducer what do you call this as you call this as inducer okay and this particular mechanism is inducible it is usually off it is usually off i'm turning it on i'm turning it on which is why i call this inducible so the question is the gene regulation how does it work is it negative yes it is negative and is repressible because repressor protein prevents transcription and is repressible because repressor protein prevents transcription you might think it is true but wait okay now feedback of inhibition because excess beta galactosidase can switch off transcription no children positive and inducible because it can induce by lactose no children it is not positive for sure negative and inducible because repressor protein prevents transcription yes it is negative and it is inducible why do i say inducible because obviously it is always in switched off condition and sometimes only it gets activated it would have been this it would have been this if the case was that it was always switched on and now you are repressing something no but it is always switched off because of the repressor proteins and now you are switching it on you are inducing it so this will be inducible so the correct answer will be children this one rather than that fine works so that is one thing and apart from lactose there is also one more thing allo lactose cool now going ahead 26th question in an inducible operon the genes are usually not expressed until a signal turns them on usually expressed until a signal turns them off never expressed always expressed children i told you it is usually not expressed because of the repressor protein until and unless a signal turns them on that is why it is known as inducible so that is all about 26th question now 27 the lac operon consists of four regulatory genes one regulatory gene and three structural genes two regulatory genes and two structural genes three regulatory genes and three structural genes is there one regulatory gene and three structural genes so over here one regulatory gene and three structural genes that you see over here okay so this is the answer 28 e coli cells with a mutated z gene of the um, of the lac operon cannot grow in medium containing only lactose as a source of energy because z gene is there Z gene is coding for beta galactosidase, and what is the role of beta galactosidase, children? Permeas, I told you, it makes the membrane permeable. Beta galactosidase, what does it do? It breaks the lactose into glucose and galactose. It breaks the lactose into glucose and galactose. So that is the role of this. Fine. So I hope you got it. Over here, the lac operon is constitutively active in the cells. They cannot synthesize the functional beta galactosidase. This is the answer. Z is for beta galactosidase, Y is for permease, and A is for transacetylase. Now, the wild type E. coli cells are growing in normal medium with glucose. They are transferred to a medium containing only lactose or sugar. Which of the following changes takes place? The lac operon is induced. E. coli stops dividing. The lac operon is repressed. All operons are induced. Basically, lac operon will be induced because lactose is there. so there is the inducer so this will be active fine now the last question of the day degeneration of a genetic code is attributed to what first degeneration means as i said one codon second codon third codon all are coding for an amino acid all are coding for an amino acid this is known as degeneracy okay this is known as degeneracy now degeneration of genetic code is attributed to who is responsible for this okay who is responsible for this particular character the first member of a codon as in if you have three codons okay you 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 is it because of the first member or the second member or the entire codon or the third member it is usually because of the third member so suppose it is you 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 or you uh, c u or u c a 
और सॉरी 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 यू यू टी सॉरी यू यू जी यू यू सी यू यू ए वॉट एवर इट इज द थर्ड मेंबर इवन इफ इट चेंजेस इट डज नॉट हैव एनी थिंग टू डू मच टू डू सो इट विल एनी वे स्टिल कोड फॉर द सेम अमाइनो एसिड सो दिस इज द आंसर थर्ड मेंबर ऑफ अ कोडोन इज द आंसर ओके एंड विद दिस आई थिंक वी आर कंप्लीटिंग आवर होल क्वेश्चन that is a 30 set of questions and if you have any doubt please feel very free to comment it down and ask me ma'am i didn't understand this question can you explain it to me once again i'll be surely explaining it to you how many ever times you need it okay so that's all children i hope you are preparing really well and i hope you are happy also so bye bye take care